In this video, I want to warn you about a little trap that you may come across if you're inclined to use auto ISO when you're shooting with your camera. A lot of photographers, uh, when they start off, they, um, they shoot in program mode and then they move on to shooting in shutter priority or aperture priority. And then eventually they move on to shooting in manual and, and sometimes to make shooting in manual a little bit easier especially when you're shooting video and you are a little bit restricted on your shutter speeds because you should have your shutter speed set to double your frame rate. So what I'm shooting at the moment at a 50th of a second and my shutter speed is a hundredth of a second and that gives the best cinematic footage. And so when you're restricted that way, you may want a wide aperture, for example, to get minimum depth of field, your shutter speed is fixed, then you've got to control your exposure somehow and a lot of people move to using auto ISO, but there is a real trap with that. The first thing to say is that um, ISO doesn't actually change the sensor sensitivity it actually changes the settings on a little amplifier that amplifies the signal from the sensor as it goes through eventually to be recorded on whatever media that you're using. Some cameras have dual base ISO or dual native ISO. So if you're shooting with Panasonic, with Sony, with RED or with Blackmagic, your camera probably has dual native ISO. And that means that there are actually two amplifiers in the camera. One is for bright light situations and it's low ISO. And the other is for dark situations or dim low light situations. And it has a different amplifier that is tuned to that low light amplification that is needed and it actually has a different noise reduction um, circuit in it as well in order to minimize the noise at low light. So I'm shooting with a Sony A7S III and it has, when you're shooting in log, and, and in this case to get the best of the dual native ISO, you should be shooting in log. So when I'm shooting in S-Log3, the, the base native ISO is 800, but there is a second native ISO at 12,800. And the thing to note is that for many of the ISOs moving on towards 12,800 in low light situations, the noise will be significantly more than once you switch up to 12,800. And the risk of using auto ISO is that it will automatically pick some of those ISOs like 4,000 or 8,000 or 10,000. And they will give you a lot more noise than you would get if you switch straight to 12,800. It may be that you feel that 12,800 is a little bit high for you. If you think that that's high for you, then you can use a variable ND to cut that down or if, if stopping down the lens isn't an option. So I want to show you a little demo of how this works, just using the camera's viewfinder and recording that for you so that you can see the variation in noise as we move through various ISO levels and how it's almost like having a completely different camera once you get to ISO 12,000. In order to demonstrate the levels of noise that you get at various ISO levels with this camera, I'm recording my screen and I can use the focus magnifier to zoom in on the small part of the screen that you see in the red rectangle. And you can see that at ISO 1600, 1600, there is a fair level of noise. I should explain, I have the lens cap on, there is no light getting into the sensor whatsoever. Um, but at ISO 600, uh, 1600, you can see that there is a fair level of noise. So just going back to the full sensor here, I'm going to change the ISO up to 3200. And you can see the noise now at full screen. It's um, really quite visible. Let's step up again, double that and go up to 6,400. Now the ISO is considerable. And finally, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to go to ISO 10,000. And if we zoom in on that, you can see that the noise is pretty horrendous. 
If I then continue and go to ISO 12800, you can see on the screen straight away that the noise has just vanished. That's because this camera has a second base ISO at 12800. It's using a second amplifier or converter um, on the signal from the sensor that is tuned to that particular ISO. If we zoom in on that, you can see there is still no noise. The critical thing here is that at almost any ISO, right down to the initial base ISO, um, which is 640, you'd need to go down quite close to 640 in order to get as clean an image as that. Um, so don't be using any of the ISOs between 1600 and 10,000 because they will give you more noise than you'll get at ISO 12,800. So I hope you find that little demo interesting. Um, I was in a situation where I was shooting in very low light recently. Uh, I was shooting an event and it was a busy event. There was a lot to think about. I was shooting in the British Museum uh, in a room that was incredibly dark and I made the mistake of setting my camera on auto ISO and what I find is that sometimes the ISO that it picked was 10,000 and if I had set it to 12,800 I would have got a very much better result. So I hope you find this video useful as a warning just use your standard ISO, uh, whatever that happens to be, 640 or 800 in normal light. But when you're in low light, move straight to your second base ISO, whatever that should be. And it, and it is different for every camera. It's different on my A1 than it is on my Sony A7S III. It'd be different in Panasonic Red or Blackmagic. Um, you need to find out what that is but in low light, skip straight up to your second native ISO, the higher one, 12,800 in my case, and use that and stop down or use a virtual ND filter in order to get the absolute best result in low light with minimum noise. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to the Video Darkroom and give a like to this video if you find this advice useful.